Welcome to Manchester, Lisu. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're here today and we um, met probably about a year ago, um, and, but also we're out in Cannes during the summer, the Cannes Advertising Festival, where we had lots of conversations. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to carry on some of those conversations and um, chat. I, I think what we discussed at Cannes and what I think we've both been interested in remotely is the how, how art has been and can steer science and technology. Yeah, there, there's a massive similarity there because I suppose what we do is obviously, I suppose our point of difference is you're an artist, I'm kind of like a commercial artist, so I have, I have to sell stuff. But obviously science is the connection. I suppose it's that piece of the campaign that makes the campaign memorable, a little hook, that insight. Without a doubt, the the foundation of, of where I start is the science, and that's actually the, yeah. where I get the most inspiration from. I mean, it'd be good to sort of chat a little bit more about art, and obviously art and commerciality. Like, there's, a, there's something that I saw recently, which was the Vital Arts um, project, where it's kind of like a, a, a trust that goes into hospitals and instead of them being sort of sterile, boring looking cold places, they actually, they change them by having artists in residence and putting on exhibitions and have walls covered in graphics. I think it's a, it's a really nice way to obviously make feel people, you know, make people feel a little bit better about where they are, where they work. Yeah, so I was working with an architecture firm and the brief was to design an interior for a psychiatric hospital and every material that I suggested that I felt would kind of elevate human experience was considered a block because yeah. of how that could be used in a dangerous way. And it makes me think about um, transformative artists and experiences like James Turrell who you can't even explain the experience of being in one of his artworks, you, you just have to go there and, and yeah. experience it. And I think that's their really potent signals for how we could change yeah. um, those environments. Can you give us an example of where you've started and where the project's finished up? A film I made called Make Your Maker um, takes genetic engineering to the extreme. So if we think about the deliberate modification of life and um, removing faulty genes and replacing them with kind of what you would maybe consider perfect genes led me to question my own genetic makeup. Uh, there's obviously some quite good parallels between what we do. Is that obviously, we always talk about doing something brave, but brave isn't like doing something completely scary, it's actually doing something that hasn't been done before. Mm. And then obviously part of our battle is trying to obviously get our clients to buy into our vision. But I, I think um, the creative process um, as from an artistic point of view is coming from a place of uncertainty and when I'm at the beginning of project I can't tell you what it's going to look like at the end and so whoever is coming along this journey is um, along this journey of uncertainty. They're investing in uncertainty. So you talked about you're not really sure where the end result's going to end up. Does that mean, so if you had a timeline, say your idea's here, we have got the science, you've got your idea, mm. how much time would you put into executing that idea? Depends on what the deliverable is. Um, it depends on um, the content of what I'm trying to make. Generally speaking, the, the idea and the science happens quite a while before the execution because yeah. that is um, me digesting and processing and... That's like your brief, you getting the brief right. Yeah, or yeah. I'm trying to work out what the brief is yeah. myself. Um, and the execution period differs in length depending upon the output. So do you, do you find, is it kind of a lonely place being an artist? I would say in the beginning I work in a very solitary way. Um, actually the work that I was doing at Philips, we were an elastic team that grew when we needed to and then came back to the kind of core team when we didn't. Yeah. A little bit of sense checking in there by some... Yeah, players, and, and actually the challenging part is to know when to like step out of 
yeah. your own personal bubble and bring people in. Yeah. You can you can create the work together and then you start asking people opinions, but then you have to know when to stop because you suddenly start realizing, well, I've got five different opinions now and everybody's saying a yeah. different thing and I don't really um, know what I think. It's really important who you ask advice from. The fewer people you ask, sometimes might be better. I quite like to um, ask my dog because it can't speak. Yeah, so then yeah. you're just answering the question yeah. yourself. Yeah, and well, if it wags its tail, it's obviously like the <laughs> idea. If it doesn't, then it's rubbish. So. <laughs> One thing I wanted to touch on with you, when we like to use the word empathy in, um, in advertising because we like to you know, understand the audience that we're talking to. You know, if we've got a campaign, I like to really get to understand what the problem is, what the issues are, what the audience is going through. Is that the similar sort of thing that you do when you're creating a piece? I don't aim to do that from the beginning, I don't think. Um, but I think possibly it's subliminally rendering yeah. in the background. Obviously part of the thing that we do as an agency is we like to do work that affects positive change. Now I know you did that lovely um, installation with the, uh, the foil blanket. Mm. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? The Future Day Spa is a good example of designing something when I don't have an idea of what the end result is going to yeah. be and also it going beyond what I ever thought that I could have designed. Us advertising guys can learn a lot from an artist like yourself. And, um, uh, yeah, and I, I think that um, I, I was talking with one of your team members today, The some of the very defining inspirations for me were advertising campaigns 12 years ago and I was like wow that is yeah. that was aspirational for me so there's a there's a, a mutual um, tr transaction of inspiration going mm. in in both ways fantastic well um, I look forward to collaborating yeah thank in the you future. thanks for Brilliant. the chat thank you